We also don't see folks like Speaker Paul Ryan um, and Senator John McCain and others come down on him very hard for that. Uh, so Chuck Todd kind of deflected it on uh, Twitter. He, he's the moderator, of course, of Meet the Press. Uh, but Tom Brokaw tweeted, really classy, explain that to your children at the president. And Hugh Hewitt, conservative radio host who also is on MSNBC, said Donald Trump only slams those he's afraid of. He should sit down with Chuck Todd on camera, not sling insults. Your thoughts? Yeah, that's exactly what people have been saying for years, that Donald Trump, who ins has insulted people for decades, that there's something really revolutionary about him doing it here. One of the things it does, in addition to uh, making the base feel like he's aligned with them, is it makes a lot of people in the media get more and more extreme and show to a wide audience that they still don't understand how Donald Trump speaks. They don't get the humor. I mean, he's like a stand-up routine out there, and of course people are enjoying it, and the media act so uh, you know prim and proper about it in response. There's also the issue that Chuck Todd had this week been very condescending and hostile to Leo Gerard, the president of the Steelworkers uh, Association Union. And so when when Donald Trump attacks Chuck Todd, who's just attacked steelworkers, I think a lot of people think that guy is going to bat for me. Well, I report in my book, Media Madness, that actually Donald Trump has had a number of off-the-record meetings with Chuck Todd where they start out yelling at each other and then have civil conversations. So that was a little surprising. And Adrian, let me uh, point to this morning. A uh, president tweeting about uh, a New York Times story saying he may bring a new lawyer onto his legal team in the Russia investigation. And he called that a fake story. And he accused the Times of saying that uh, he was unhappy with his current lawyers. The story doesn't actually say that. And he goes after Maggie Haberman, the New York Times reporter who probably knows him better than any other journalists having covered him for years and says she's a Hillary flunky and that she has no access. Your thoughts on that attack? Look, Maggie Haberman is one of the best journalists in the business. That we all know. That is an established fact. This is what Donald Trump does. If he is seeking the approval of a journalist who he feels like he is not quite in their favor, this is what he does. He attacked Chuck. He attacked Maggie. Um, you know, he's attacked Katie Turr during the campaign trail. This is what he does. Right. Um, you know, uh, Maggie Haberman tweeted that people close to Trump had confirmed the story. And by the way, the idea she has no access, she's interviewed him as president a number of times. All right, let me get a break here. Let me also say I had a terrific time this week at the Reagan Library talking about my new book. So thanks to the folks there. And if you'd like to check it out, it's Media Madness, Donald Trump, the press and the war over the truth. When we come back, press gives Gary Cohen a hero send off. Why is the coverage of the president's moves on tariffs so heavily negative? And later... Jenny Willoughby on her media ordeal as Rob Porter's ex-wife and whether the issue of domestic abuse is being reduced to political fodder. <laughs> Gary Cohn's resignation touched off waves of reporting and commentary on top officials leaving the White House and how this is chaos, a brain drain, a hemorrhaging of talent. President told reporters, hey, I like conflict. Uh, the chaos thing is way overstated. Molly, uh, is there a scintilla of doubt that most members of the mainstream media uh, side with Gary Cohn on not imposing tariffs on aluminum and steel and think the president will be floundering without him? Well, it's not just that. I mean, they're actually there are no good economic arguments for doing tariffs if you just view it economically. And I think the problem is that that, it, that narrow prism is the only way that a lot of people in the media are looking at it. That is a well-established fact that tariffs hurt the economy, they're taxes on people. The Trump administration says it's also a national security issue. They think the fundamental issue is whether a country should have steel and aluminum capabilities or not. And they say, we should, and this is how we make sure that we have a strong national se national security. So broadening out that discussion would help them not be so biased. Right. There has been a lot of turnover in this White House. I could go through the list of names. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if Gary Cohn left because of a policy disagreement, or you know, this was the final straw, well, yeah. he wasn't elected. But, man, they, he, the press seems to love Gary Cohn suddenly. Well, I think the, I think the press is, I have actually liked Gary Cohn for a long time because, because he is one of the most, more stable figures, if you will, in the West Wing. He's been with Trump for a long time. They have deep ties going back to New York. I think also a lot of journalists have relationships with Gary as well. Ah, so, so if you talk to reporters <laughs> and you feed the beast, then that helps with your public image. Well, and look, I don't know about that. But, but, but again, he is one of the more stable figures who has been in the, the administration. He is somebody who has a lot of credibility on economic issues and I think that they are coming of it from the standpoint that perhaps he is actually leaving because they truly did have this fundamental disagreement. Yeah, well, which, you know, that's how uh, politics works. But, you know, the, the political headline, Jillian, was had the word disaster in it. And that was a blind quote, an unnamed White House official quoted in the piece as saying, with Gary gone, I just think from a policy perspective, it means disaster. 
That's an unnamed White House official. So leaks from within the White House, people who favor Gary Cohen, also fueling this uh, narrative. Yeah, I, I think that part of the reason, I don't know that I agree with you guys so much, though, that he's been a beloved figure in the media up until now. I see this turn as more of a departure for the media. And I think the reason that they're sort of showering him with this love is because this is really the first time we've seen someone leave the administration because they have a actual policy mm -hmm. difference disagreement with with the president and that's the best kind of red meat that the press can hope for i think it's better and uh, to chew over than when somebody leaves after a scandal even like scaramucci or tom price this is the first time that yeah. somebody is really saying i don't think the president's moving in a direction that's good for the country that i huh? agree with so i'm out right that's what the media it may wants also to be personal with. gary Cohn wanted a bigger job apparently didn't get it uh Cohn did take some heat from the press for he criticized the president's remarks after Charlottesville, but didn't leave then. Uh, but right now, I think if it's Trump versus Cohen, it seems like which way. And just briefly, Molly, tariffs may be a good or bad idea. You say probably a bad idea, but the media often forget this is what he promised during the campaign. I, I'm, what I'm saying is, economically speaking, yeah. that issue is settled. Right. But you have to look at it a little bit bigger than that as well. And I think that the Trump administration is viewing this as a bargaining chip. It's a way of repositioning ourselves vis-a-vis -vis China. And China is able to get its steel into the U.S. even, even um, in a way that is hurting, uh, that's helping them and hurting us. So these are bigger issues, and we yeah. need to have that bigger picture discussion as well. And politically, it appeals to folks in the Rust Belt states. Uh, great to see you all. Adrian Elrod, Molly Hemingway, Jillian Turner. Thanks very much. Ahead, the Stormy Daniels saga is back on the front pages. Is the porn star's tale getting traction now that lawsuits are being filed? But up next, the on-air humiliation of former Trump aide Sam Nunberg. Was he exploited by the cable news anchors? You took a very long nap on Monday. You missed the Sam Nunberg show, which went on and on and on and prompted some sharp criticism of cable news. Nunberg is a former Trump campaign aide who was fired, got hit with a subpoena in the Bob Mueller investigation and promptly decided to tell the world again and again on CNN, MSNBC and elsewhere that he had no intention of cooperating. If you're going to defy a grand jury subpoena, are you worried about being held in contempt of court? Let, let's see what Mr. Mueller does. Are you worried about getting arrested? I think it would be funny if they arrested me. Are you, you think I should it? cooperate with you? Should I spend 80 hours going over my emails, Jake? If it were me, I would. I mean, if you're asking my opinion, just because it sounds like a pain, but he is the special counsel and he does have the, the long do arm of the law. And why is Nunberg saying this? He didn't even attempt to hide his motivation. Because I... I'm not a fan of Donald Trump. She treated me like crap. Right. Okay? As the day wore on, number grew increasingly outlandish, tossing out unsubstantiated charges with reckless abandon. They probably have something on Trump. Trump did something pretty bad, I find it assume. What do they have? I don't know. I think some people are worried about you, and they're worried about what you're doing. I think other people are upset because we just showed the White House, which doesn't want to comment on this, responding to you. So clearly you Sarah, are... Sarah should shut up. Frankly. Clearly you're in the eye of a storm. Sarah should shut up. Humberg apologized for that and for criticizing Sarah Huckabee Sanders for her physical appearance. And hanging over it all, this question, was he sloshed? I have smelled alcohol in your breath. Well, I, I have not had a drink. You haven't had a drink, so that's no. not... No. So I, I just, because it is the talk out there, again, I know it's awkward. Well, if he was, the hangover came the next morning and Nunberg showed up to testify on Friday. So some critics are saying the networks exploited a guy who was melting down. And look, after a while, it did seem like a bloody prize fight that should have been stopped. But cable hosts focus on getting the best bookings for their hour. Sam Nunberg, who has firsthand information about the Mueller probe and wanted to deliver a message, was news. Nobody pressured him to going on TV. And there was nothing wrong with interviewing him as long as you remind viewers that he couldn't corroborate most of the wild stuff he was throwing out. And by the way, Nunberg's happy. He said it was good TV. He enjoyed the exposure. Still ahead, she was known to the press as Rob Porter's ex-wife. Now Jenny Willoughby will be here to talk about the backlash over a scandal she never sought. But first, is the Stormy Daniels story tabloid trash or far more serious now that the president's lawyer is being accused of trying to buy her silence?
I spoke to Michael Cohen, President Trump's personal lawyer, about his role in the Stormy Daniels saga, which has burst back into the news with her lawsuit against the president, trying to overturn a non-disclosure agreement so she can talk about what she says was an affair more than a decade ago. It was Cohen who made a $130,000 payment to the former porn star shortly before the election. And Stormy's lawyer, well, he's been making the television rounds. You think the president knew about it? There's no question the president knew about it at the time. Uh, the idea that an attorney would go off on his own without his client's knowledge and engage in this type of negotiation and enter into this type of agreement, quite honestly, I think is ludicrous. When the storyline is a porn star was paid $130,000 by the president's personal lawyer in order to keep her mouth shut about an affair that took place just shortly around the time that his son was being born. This is not a good storyline for the president. Michael Cohen, who went to arbitration last week and got a temporary restraining order against Daniels speaking out, told me a number of things in an interview, starting with this. I have committed no crime in the production of the agreement or the payment to Ms. Clifford, a real name is Stephanie Clifford. The sole purpose of these negative attacks is nothing more than an attempt to malign our president and distract the American people from his historic achievements over this past year. Joining us now here in Washington, Emily Jashinsky, a commentary writer for the Washington Examiner. And in Austin, Texas, Jessica Tarloff, Fox News contributor and a senior editor at Bustle.com. Emily, many people dismiss this story as tabloid gossip. Does the hush money aspect and Michael Cohen getting this restraining order against Stormy Daniels, does that turn it into front page news? So I think, and we've talked about this before, that Donald Trump, the narrative that Donald Trump has kind of created for himself, I mean, this is a man who is on the cover of Playboy. When the allegation first surfaced, when we saw that In Touch interview, I think it was last month for the first time, people blinked, you know, it was just kind of a blink because it doesn't buck that mm -hmm. narrative. And so I think though, when you're adding legal ramifications, that could actually, I mean, the president himself was basically named in a lawsuit this week. That's going to create problems for him. And so yet, then I do think that we're talking about front page news here. All right, Jessica, let me read you another uh, comment from my interview with Michael Cohen. The president's lawyer says, where I have been mistreated is by the talking heads on the various news programs making determinations that are not based upon fact, but based upon their opinions and limited knowledge of the events. Of course, the Trump White House hasn't exactly been answering a lot of questions about this, Jessica. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the key point there is limited knowledge. Michael Cohen could help us out and maybe make it clearer what actually happened there. I mean, this story has gone through so many iterations, and now we finally ended up at the place where Trump's personal lawyer paid the money and even used his official Trump email account to do it. That was broken, I think, by NBC News over the weekend, which is completely ludicrous. And, and I know that this point has been made a number of times before. If this had happened with President Obama, the country would be on fire because it's President Trump and he was on the cover of Playboy and he used to talk to Howard Stern about all sorts of inappropriate things, it's supposed to be okay. And, you know, it's our fault that we're horrified at the idea that, A, he would do this while his wife was four months before her due date. Uh